Grace and Peace. It's Tuesday, October 6th, and we're with Luke on the road with Jesus. Awestruck, everyone praised God, saying, A great prophet has appeared among us. God has come to help us. Welcome to this time of prayer. My name is Kay Huggins, and I'm the parish associate at Second Presbyterian Church in Albuquerque, New Mexico. As we tape this, we're beside the stream that runs through Hamas Springs, and we're enjoying the colors of this place. This is a community of prayer, and some of us are close friends from Second Presbyterian Church, and some of us are strangers who don't know anyone's name. But we meet at this place of prayer early in the morning, at midday, and sometimes late at night. We're blessed to be here, to soak in Scripture, to consider Jesus' way, and to pray for the world and those we love. This is our time of deep, satisfying spiritual connection. If you're new to these devotions, relax. I do most of the work. You simply come along with an open heart and an open mind. If you want to know more, read the weekly welcome on the web page. We're going to begin today with a psalm based on one of the psalms for today, number 42. I hope you'll read the psalm today. The refrain for 42 is, We hope in God, who is our help. We hope in God, who is our help. Let us pray. Mighty God, remind us that you do not forget us, nor have you neglected your promises made and kept in Jesus Christ. Kindle hope within us that we may warmly welcome Christ into our hearts and serve him with love and joy. Amen. We hope in God, who is our help. Well, life on the road with Jesus was a life of meaningful interruptions. There was always someone in need, always a few who wanted to be healed, and always an unexpected circumstance that touched Jesus' heart. In two snippets of Life on the Road with Jesus, we learn, we see him attending to a, quote, deserving outsider and a devastated insider. I'm reading from Luke, chapter 7, the first 17 verses. After Jesus finished presenting all his words among the people, he entered Capernaum. Now a centurion had a ser servant who was very important to him, but the servant was ill and about to die. When the centurion heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders to Jesus to ask him to come and heal his servant. And when they came to Jesus, they earnestly pleaded with him, this man deserves to have you do this for him. They said, he loves our people and he built our synagogue. Jesus went with them and he had almost reached the house when the centurion sent friends to say to Jesus, Lord, don't be bothered. I don't deserve to have you come under my roof. In fact, I don't even consider myself worthy to come to you. Just say the word and my servant will be healed. I also am a man appointed under authority with soldiers under me, under me. I say to one go, and he goes, and to another come, and he comes. I say to my servant, do this, and the servant does it. When Jesus heard these words, he was impressed with the centurion, and he turned to the crowd following him and said, I tell you, even in Israel, I haven't found faith like this. And when the centurion's friends returned to the house, they found the servant restored to health. A little later, Jesus went to the city called Nain, and his disciples and a great crowd traveled with him. As he approached the city gate, a dead man was being carried out. 
He was his mother's only son, and she was a widow. A large crowd from the city was with her, and when Jesus saw her, the Lord had compassion for her and said, don't cry. He stepped forward and touched the stretcher on which the dead man was being carried. And those carrying stood still. And Jesus said, young man, I say to you, get up. And the dead man sat up and began to speak. And Jesus gave him back to his mother. Awestruck, everyone praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help us. The news about Jesus sped, spread throughout Judea and the surrounding region. Jesus taught an odd system of rewards. Ordinarily, rewards come after the completion of a task or an assignment. The reward of a good day's labor is a fair wage and rest, or the reward from an especially difficult task might be recognition or perhaps even applause. Jesus flipped that system. For Jesus, rewards came first. And then came his most prized, came the most prized response, a whole new life oriented towards God. Jesus felt if you treated people to the best, they would in turn recognize God's grace, be grateful, and live boldly in that grace. These two stories represent Jesus' dispensation of unexpected and unmerited grace. First, there is the, quote, good outsider with a servant near death. Jesus responds wholeheartedly. He sets out on foot to visit the home of a centurion to attend to the dying servant, but the centurion is humble and he understands authority. He sends a message that he doesn't deserve Jesus' full attention, but the servant's life is saved, the centurion's faith is praised, and by grace, there's a new beginning. Likewise, as Jesus encounters a widow in the funeral procession for her only son, he rushes in with abundant grace awakening the dead boy and giving him back to his mother again. By grace, there is a new beginning for all. Grace comes first, then comes abundant life. It's a reversal that's hard to understand, but an absolutely delightful thing to experience. As we pray today, Let's pray that we all savor Christ's grace. We begin with prayers for Tuesday. Let us pray. Eternal God, we rejoice this day in the gift of life which we have received by your grace and the new life you give us in Jesus Christ. Especially we thank you for the love of our families the affection of our friends, the strength and ability to serve your purposes this day, the community in which we live, and the many opportunities to give as we have received. God of grace, we offer our prayers for the needs of others and commit ourselves to serve them even as we have been served in Jesus Christ. Especially we pray for those closest to us, families, friends, neighbors. But we also pray for refugees and the many around the world, men, women, and children without homes. For the outcast and the persecuted, for those from whom we are estranged. And on this day, 
we pray for the church in Africa. Dear Lord, we seek to be your faithful ones. We seek to live lives pleasing to you. We seek to be led and we seek your care. As we pray for others today, we remember your blessings first announced as be beatitudes and given as grace. And therefore we pray, Jesus, bless all who are poor in spirit today, those who are ill and suffering, those who are anxious or full of fear, those who feel at the end of the rope. Give to each we name a glimpse of your world. Jesus, bless all who are mourning today, those whose tears are public and those who weep in solitude. Give each your comfort. We name especially Jesus, bless all who are meek and gentle, weak and mild, unassuming and pushed to the edges of life. Give to each a place to belong, a portion of your good gift of land, a share in common humanity. We name Jesus, bless those who hunger and thirst for your coming realm. Let them see your grace abounding in this troubled world. We name. Jesus, bless all who give mercy that they may be enfolded more deeply in your mercy. We name the merciful. Bless those who are pure in heart and purpose. Give to them the insight and wisdom that comes from God alone. We name those pure ones among us. Jesus, bless the peacemakers. May their community expand until all the world knows you as creator and parent. We name the peacemakers. Jesus, bless all who are persecuted for your ways in the world. Give them strength through the grace of knowing your heavenly realm is near at hand. We name. Holy God, hasten the day when all we know, share, and receive Christ's best blessings may rejoice and be glad. For such is your realm in heaven and on earth. Let us pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. May the God of grace be with us now and always. Let the people say, Amen. Bless the Lord. Let the people say, The Lord's name be praised. And now as God's beloved own and dear ones. Know that this day, designed to allow you to receive God's blessings and share those blessings, is perfect 
just the way it is. Remember the refrain from Psalm 42. We hope in God who is our help. Now, insofar as it depends on you, live peaceably with all until we pray again.